Hi, welcome to a new video. And um, this one, because I'm holding a book, uh, will be a book review. I haven't done book reviews in a while. And that doesn't mean I have, haven't been reading books. I have, but I haven't found anything that was interesting, so to speak. And I have a couple of books that I'm currently reading. Maybe I will talk about them, one in particular. But this book, I actually, I was in the mood to read something during the winter and um, I'm weird like that where I kind of match the seasons with the book. So if, if the book, if the, the action or the story in the book is happening in the winter, then it motivates me to read it in the winter. Makes sense. And also I bought the book because of the cover. Um, it just, these broken roses really attracted me. And then the author is Dostoevsky. Actually my grandfather, had uh, this custom to give a set of Dostoevsky books to all of his family members and I lost my set so I read a couple of books uh, in school The Crime and Punishment I read the brother, Brothers Karamazov and then I read uh, the Notes from the Underground but really like later when I studied it there wasn't time and I don't know, it just kind of, um, I lost the the motivation to do it. And then also one of my friends said, how can you read his books? Because to me, it feels like um, after I finish reading, it feels like somebody has punched me in the face. <laughs> and you really do feel this anguish and this heaviness. Um, and that's very true. Um, but at the same time, like as I'm getting older and um, because I've read so so many authors, I think I get to appreciate the book, books like this that really tell the truth. Um, and so the title is, I think the cor correct translation would be humiliated and insulted, not humiliated and injured. Um, that would be like the full translation, humiliated and insulted. And yeah, um, it's not a happy book. <laughs> there are people who are humiliated and insulted in the book. And um you will cry if you read it, but I will give some spoilers just uh, because I want to explain the story if, you, if you're somebody who just wants to listen um, and not read. But if you read it yourself, like you cannot, you cannot really um, tell uh, a book of Dostoevsky. You, you have to read it because he's so detailed. He goes into the psychology of the character characters here. So I think there is also a movie made by a Russian director. You can find it on YouTube if you're interested to watch that. But I think that the movie is really gloomy. It's very dark, um, which is the atmosphere of the book because it's happening in St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg in the winter. So a lot of the scenes that are happening outside, he also describes the atmosphere, the weather, and it is very wet and cold and um, just people are generally not pleased by the weather but as the book moves toward towards the end the weather starts changing the spring is coming and then summer um so it, it changes a bit the background about Dostoevsky I ha I didn't I don't know much but I know that he was born in Moscow and that he was a, a son of a doctor so his uh doc his father was a doctor and he worked uh, in a hospital for underprivileged people and in the street where they lived there was an orphanage as well and an asylum so Dostoevsky as a very small child he was able to observe lots of different people on the streets from um, you know people who were heavily medicated alcoholics abandoned children uh, he saw a lot of violence uh, so he was kind of confronted with the reality of society very young and he learned how to observe Actually, one of the things that he says about himself is that he was a good observer. So he was observing people and his life will take him to to many different directions. He had uh, he was married. He had kids. He lived in the West a little bit, but he always stayed true to his uh, orthodox uh, upbringing. So he he was not a communist, but he was not a, a Democrat either. He was for this kind of Christian um justice that he, he I think he said that if um everybody respect the Christian values there would be no need for law basically because if everybody follows the the law of God um in a way and so in the Orthodox Church there are some commandments 
Uh, so the difference, I think, between Orthodox and Western Christianity is that uh, in Orthodoxy, I think sins are not forgiven under any circumstance. So he, I think he meant if you follow the Orthodox rules, which is don't kill, don't steal, don't um, do adultery, uh, take care of the closest ones to you, uh, don't be jealous, and all of those like rules from the Bible, um, you would, like, if everybody did that, the societies will be ideal. So just to set the story a little bit, during that time in Russia, so we, we're still talking about um, the Russia under the Romanov Empire, so the Tsar was still um, ruling, and, um, you know, you have this class uh, struggle, you have people who are noble or nobility or foreigners foreign nobility and you have people who manage to through education maybe if they're doctors or lawyers uh they work in the city so they acquired some status for themselves uh, and then you have uh people who are pretty much um abandoned by everyone so the poor ones um especially you know the the ones that were underprivileged maybe people who live in the countryside you have peasants who work uh at the um the big uh farms or how do they say like the 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 biggest states of these noblemen so usually in st petersburg if you were a nobleman you would be given um after you retire uh, an estate somewhere in the south of russia usually because of the weather and you would have all the power to organize that estate so that would be yours and you would hire people people would be living on that estate and work for you similar to like a form of slavery but they were not called slave because they were paid they could change um the duke or baron um, i'm not sure about these titles i think that they were mostly dukes um who employs them so they could if they're not not satisfied and they have courage they could move to another estate and so basically uh, people who had estates were all friends amongst each other and they were organizing parties and socializing getting married um from families that were noble so it was a pretty much a class system that was very unfair and unjust to the poor ones that's why the book is called humiliated and insulted um so it really begins with um, this narrator, Vanya, who is the main character, so to speak. So he's the one telling the story. I think this this character is actually Dostoevsky uh, when he was younger, because he's somebody who grew up in an estate somewhere in the countryside, and he now moved to St. Petersburg to pursue his career to become a writer. Um, during this life at this estate, he... Um, met people from a neighboring estate and um, there he befriended uh, Natasha who is a daughter of the owner of the estate who would, that was nearest to them and so they they became very good friends almost like platonic lovers so he was in love with her but she fell in love with a younger duke so to speak who who was also the owner of one of the estates nearby and so uh, the father of that duke um, somehow humiliated her father, where her father was a very uh, honest, just man. But this other guy, the, the duke's father, we would call him Baron, um, he has a history of not being very um, good of a person. So he technically, I think he stole their estate by some... Um, doing some illegal things and so they had to also move to St. Petersburg so, so Natasha with his with her um, father and mother they moved to St. Petersburg so at the time where the book begins both Vanya and Natasha are in St. Petersburg uh, but the book actually begins with something else it begins with a um, uh, an older man like I said who is followed by a dog and uh, he's looking terrible um almost barely walking um and um he's without food he usually sits in some cafes to get warm with the dog and Vanya is very interested about this man who is he 
why is he followed by a dog? Um, he looks interesting, but at the same time, he didn't want to bother him in a way. So he would just observe him from afar. And um, it was, again, winter in St. Petersburg, very cold. So both, both of them were kind of seeking shelter. I won't go too much into detail of the story of Vanya and Natasha because it's a typical unrequited love. So Vanya is somebody who dreams about Natasha and he wants to be with her. But at the same time, she is desperately in love with this younger Duke who really doesn't know what he wants. He is in love with this idea of being with, with Natasha, but at the same time, they're not from the same class, so to speak. And also uh, the fathers hate each other. So it's not a good fit. Um, but still, Natasha decides to run away from her parents and move in with the Duke. Um, and Vanya is kind of um, disappointed, but he cannot leave her because she needs him and he will always be there for her. But at the same time, he's also a good friend of her father and he always goes to their house. And the father is saying that he will never forgive her because she betrayed him in the terrible way so she disgraced the family by running away and living with somebody and not being married and so um Vanya is trying to write this book and he's following again this older man and in one of these occasions um the dog Azorka um dies so the dog dies in a cafe and there is like a commotion everybody is um, trying to help the older man. Um, he doesn't have any money, so they're giving him free food or something, and he doesn't want anything. So he gets outside, very upset uh, from this cafe, and then Vanya follows him, and they sit at a bench, and he's trying to tell something to Vanya, uh, um, like where he lives, or I don't know. Um, Vanya's trying to ask him questions, but in the end, the older man dies. So the story begins with the dog and the older man dying and Vanya witnessing that uh, situation. So he's very upset. He's trying to find out more about this older man. And one of the neighbors uh, points to the address of where the older man lives. So Vanya goes there and he sees that it's a very uh, rundown apartment, very moist, cold, and that you know he barely lived without a bed with no food. Something interesting about this older man that Vanya wanted to find out, and so he would always think about the possibility of discovering more about him. And so he decides to move into his apartment um, because the apartment is empty, and he thinks whoever knew him may come to maybe find out what happened, and that's how he will discover um, the family of this man. And that thing actually happened. So once while he was uh, writing in his room, there's this young girl called Nellie. Um, and uh, she comes and very, in a very shy manner, he doesn't recognize Vanya. And he she asks, where is my grandfather? And Vanya immediately connects the stories that this young girl is the granddaughter of this um, smith. Um, an older man and um, Vanya tells her that he died and she asks also about the dog and he said that the dog also died so the child is very upset um, she runs out and he follows her and he sees that she is an orphan um, that she's very poorly dressed and she she's living in a part of St. Petersburg that is very run down as well so he manages to go to this house where she is and he sees that she's living with this alcoholic older woman and that she's beating her, basically. So she sent her to pick up some things. She, um, Nellie did not do it, so she was punished. And at the same time, she, um, from that stress, she suffers an epileptic attack. Um, and Vanya sees that she's actually very, very sick. So in that moment, he kind of decided that he will help the little girl. So he will be the one to take her out of that situation. And in that um, in that uh, journey, uh, he's helped by his friend, an old friend that is also a writer. And he is a kind of bit of a socialite in St. Petersburg at that time. So he knows a lot of people. He also knows the 
the Duke and the Baron. Um, he knows Natasha and his family and her family. So they're connected in that way. And uh, together with Umanya, they decide that they will discover the truth about this girl. So as you can see, like the, the book is not really typical Dostoevsky, is much more, uh, I don't know, it reminds me of like Charles Dickens, um, Great Expectations or something like that. It is very, uh, it almost feels like it was uh, set in London. Um, it's not very typically Russian. Also, there is not a lot about politics in the book um, at that time. So um, it's more about those class differences. But to go back to the story, Nellie uh, finds herself taken care of by Manya. So in one of those occasions when he's visiting her, he decides to take her and he says that he will be taking care of her um, because there is a possibility, possibility that she will be sold um to uh become a prostitute and so he cannot allow that he takes her to his apartment or to the apartment of her grandfather and so um they live there together and her health condition is not good so she is she has a heart condition and um she cannot really exert herself she has to be calm and um basically have a life that she doesn't have she has to you know have a life that she will never be able to have. She's all the opposite. Um, at the same time, like Nelly, for me, is the main character because she has three personalities. So she has um, a side of her that is very childful, childlike and playful. Um, she is very cheeky. She wants to explore. She wants to live. There is this very kind of big um, desire to live. But at the same time, there is this anger and oppressed uh, feelings of uh, betrayal and humiliation that that come out, and she becomes very aggressive and angry. But also at the at the same time, um, she's a very very smart girl, and um, she knows um, what what she should be doing. But at the same time, she knows why she cannot do it. I can compare her a little bit with Alice in Wonderland, but this would be like Alice in Borderland, <laughs> Alice in in a nightmare. Um, and we see that very interesting dynamic between Vanya and Nelly uh, because he's always very assertive and he wants to help her. He says, um, please stay here while I'm gone because he also needs to monitor Natasha, who's very upset because of uh, the Duke and that whole situation that's not going as planned. So uh, she cannot get married. Um, this Duke is constantly on these trips he's never with her she misses him so Vanya is kind of going between um, Natasha and Nelly and um, Nelly is at the same time upset because she never had anyone help her so she wants to kind of repay um, for for his favor uh, she cannot accept true um, generosity because she never nobody was ever generous to her but at the same time she's very very close she's not talking anything um she's not communicating about her life to vanya and he discovers actually that she had a mother who died in a, in a basement so basically she was living with her mother until her death and mother was very um weak and that mother was actually the daughter of the older man smith so um Smith was somebody who lived in that neighborhood, but he never spoke to his daughter for some reason. And um, Nelly, Nellie's mother would send her to communicate with her grandfather, sometimes to ask for food, sometimes to ask for money. Um, but um, there is this higher purpose of, of her mother sending her to grandfather uh, is for forgiveness, but we don't know why what's what happened there and why he is not forgiving his daughter um and nelly was kind of this in-between person she was seeing her mother die and not being able to help her because they were so poor and at the same time seeing her struggling grandfather who is also poor but he refuses to help in any way and so she, that's kind of the sentiment that she grew up in. At, at the same time, she had this um, heart condition. So it was very, very hard for her. She was begging on the street, but because she was very sympathetic, she was um, 
you know, charismatic, people would give her food and money. And that's how she was able to um, live with, with um, her mother for that short period. And then slowly, we also discovered that her mother and her did not really belong in that poor area. So they were ridiculed, they were often um, kind of uh, they had a bad reputation about them, but mostly because women from that neighborhood were jealous and they um, wanted just to kind of humiliate. Somewhere in the middle of the book, we discover more about the a baron, so the father of the duke. And this baron, um, he's somebody who is now trying to marry uh, his son, to a good family that's rich. So Natasha is basically um, an extra. So she needs to be removed from the picture. And he says that openly, he wants to marry her to somebody more fitting so that she can leave her son uh, to be with this uh, other girl that is the heiress of this big estate. So uh, he's somebody who is very calculated. He looks um, through everything, um, in this very monetary way. So he just wants money and power. And then later also we discovered that he lived abroad and that he had a very bad reputation abroad. Um, so, but somehow he's, uh, there's a, a conversation between, because uh, Baron invites Vanya for dinner. And there's an interesting conversation where um, Baron basically says that he knows the way he is and he's not ashamed of that. So. I think Dostoevsky there showed these two types of people, one group that are not afraid and they're not ashamed of hurting other people for their benefit. And then there is the side of humiliated and insulted who are usually victims of these other people uh, who are more opportun opportunistic or, and more, um, more um, predator-like. So it's a story about a predator and a prey. Uh, but Nelly here, um, it would be an interesting story and you could pick sides, really. You could pick sides. Somebody can say, okay, but what is wrong with being, you know, a material person? I need money. I, I have one life. If I can, you know, live it the way I want to, if I have the power to, you know, seduce people and make them, um, you know, give me money for my benefit and like make them do what I want, why not? Why Why would I not do that? But Nelly here stands basically as a symbol of everything that's good in the world. And because of her, you cannot say that that's okay. So we, it, kind of Dostoevsky, uh, he is um, not letting us pick a side. We are, if if you read the book, by the end, you will have to be on Nellie's side. Towards the end, um, you're just uh, crushed and also um, uh, impressed by the way that he managed to tell her story until the end um, and kind of give her the ending that is very, very um, poetic and, you know, almost spiritual. So the story between the Duke and Natasha ends uh, poorly. Um, Duke admits that he doesn't know if he's in love with this other girl or Natasha. He loves them both. And he is a character that is very comical. It's a story about this young guy that is very privileged, um, had everything, thinks that he knows about struggles in the world, but he really doesn't know. And Vanya, every time when he is with him, he's like, uh, what can I do with this child basically like I cannot explain to him how much d damage is he doing to people by acting like that but at the same time like who can blame him he can do whatever he wants and so he definitely from that from the first point that we are in where he says that he will marry Natasha now he doesn't want to marry her anymore but he wants her to stay in his life so Natasha here um, we don't know about her as well, she is. Um, uh, she says that she is in love with him, but I, that she loves him um, like that. That love is very versatile. So she loves him as a partner, but also as a son, 
and as a you know a person there maybe she's in love with the feeling that he gives her so we don't know what kind of love that is um but at the same time she loves Va Vanya as her brother so she, I am not sure that she's aware of the love that Vanya has for her but at the same time she she cannot live without him so he always they're very much connected he always needs to be there for her and at this at the time where she's having like a mental crisis where uh duke when duke abandons her um vanya is there with her and um she basically stays alone uh in this rented apartment and uh, without any support from anyone because um to remind you um her father um actually said that he doesn't want to do anything with her so uh she cannot go back yet to her parents because they dishonored her in a way mother is not that strict uh she is more um on the side of forgiveness but father is very very adamant he doesn't want to forgive her because uh he also uh knows that natasha knows that the father of duke is this baron who offended him and who took away his estate. And so there is a lot of unforgiveness. So there is a lot of this, um, th uh, there are a lot of these lines that these characters do don't want to cross for whatever reason. Uh, a lot of the times it's pride. They have this pride, which is also a characteristic that Dostoevsky talks about a lot, um, about Russian people and Orthodox a faith where um this um you know you you cannot like you don't you don't have two cheeks basically if if um if you get humiliated for whatever reason um you lose your honor and there is no redemption so there is no other way live um thinking about yourself and how not to dis dishonor yourself but if you do that there is no going back so you will have to live with your consequences and that's that other side as well. And that's the Nelly side. You will see this young child, how she is practicing that pride. Um, so back to Nelly, she's still living with Vanya, but her health condition is very, uh, very bad. So she um, is having more of these attacks. Uh, sometimes she cannot breed well. Um, and there is this German doctor who um, comes to visit and he really wants to help her. He's giving her medication. Um, and so at one of the occasions, she sees the Baron um, visiting Vanya and she gets really, really upset and she runs uh, from, from the apartment. And so Vanya finds her again begging on the streets. She, um, It's very cold. She's very poorly dressed and she, he buys her some clothes uh, so she can be able to get dressed. There is very, very, and this would be probably my favorite moment from the whole book where um, Vanya says to Nelly that he will not be able as a single man to take care of her. But there is this couple uh, who is the Natasha's parents who are willing to take her in. And um, he explains a little bit about the the situation that Natasha's father is not forgiving his his daughter and the daughter is not living with them anymore. And Nellie says that she doesn't want to, she gets very upset and she says that she doesn't want to live with those kinds of people. And Vanya is like, what do you mean? Because they want to help you. And she's like, but the father doesn't want to forgive um, his daughter, what kind of father is that? And she breaks um, one of the cups, teacups, uh, very aggressively, and she runs from the apartment. And again, Vanya is looking for her, and she is begging on the streets. And she decides he decides to follow her to see where will she go. And she actually is um, she acquires some money from from you know, people on the street, and she goes to the supermarket, and Vanya thinks that she will buy food, but actually she buys the cup, and uh, she and then she is walking back to the apartment, and Vanya is there, and when she um, saw him, she got really scared, and she broke um, the glass, or the, the cup fell on the, on the ground, so she, she felt very, very embarrassed, 
almost very innocent and naive there we could see that she is really still a child after that incident with the cup i think that vanya realizes that nelly he i think he understood her better he understood why is she acting like that because sometimes she would be very very demanding very foolish sometimes she would cry and laugh in the matter of minutes she would you know um do some things on purpose to kind of test their patience her character is very interesting you you will have to read the book and see and um the doctor says one day that um if she keeps on going out to the street and if she keeps on behaving the way she is which is almost crazy like that she will not be alive for much longer because her heart will not be able to stand so much trauma and so much so much um exhaustion because like i said sometimes she's talking about things that they don't understand and they don't know how to help her um and when he suggested that she can have a very peaceful life with these um with these new people who will uh, support her she doesn't want to accept that so she he's out of it he doesn't know how to help her anymore and um at that time, Natasha is also doing very badly, and he realizes that if Nellie goes to Natasha's parents, and if she tells her story about her mother, um, who died alone and um, in poor conditions, maybe the father of Natasha will find some pity or some love in his heart for his daughter and take her back in. So Vanya, knowing that Nelly has a very poor health, he's putting this task in front of her. I have this woman that I love, and I think you can save her. And Nelly, for the first time in her life, she feels that she owes something to someone. So she never had any connection with anyone. She was an orphan. Her mother and grandfather died. So Vanya is the first one who took care of her, and they created this bond. And because of this small bond or short bond that they have, because she's like only 13 years old and they've been living together for maybe like half a year, um, she accepts. But Vanya knows that this will maybe endanger her health. The scene is very well written um, where her heart is beating. She's almost having a panic attack. Because she knows, not because of where she's going, not because of these people, not because of Vanya, it's because of the story that she needs to tell. And she doesn't know, will she be able to tell that story fully? The, the author here is telling us to prepare because, um, you know, if, if this girl is um, so upset of the fact that she will have to tell this story, imagine like what the story will be like. And so, like I said, most of the book is anticipating this final moment. And when we come to that final moment, we're kind of very slowly led into it. And so in this house, um, she is greeted by the Natasha's mother and she's very welcomed. And then she starts telling her story. So basically she starts from the, her mother's illness, that she was ill for a while, that she had, I'm not really sure at that time, there was this illness of the lungs um, where you coughed a lot. I think it, it is due to basically malnutrition and cold and moist because a lot of these um, older houses that were cheap were, were had this uh, issue with, um humidity um and like the yeast and whatever so i think uh, her mother could have been saved uh, she was not like terminally ill but because of stress and that life her her health deteriorated slowly and she was the only one observing that so she saw her mother the only person that she ever loved um getting worse and worse until the end and so um, she taught, she was telling them about how, uh, her mother would send her to grandma, how she first discovered actually. So, uh, they discovered that grandfather lived in that neighborhood, but, uh, just by following the dog, they recognized the dog 
because um, that was her mother's dog who grandfather later took. And so uh, that's how they discovered that he lives nearby. And so mother was hoping that he will be able to forgive her. But why he needs to forgive her, that's the spoiler of the story. So basically this uh, older man, Smith, the grandfather, he was very, very rich. He was one of the industrials and um, they were living in South Germany at the time. So Nelly was born in uh, outside of Russia and Germany. But uh, Nelly's father is actually the Baron. So the Baron, uh, he met Nelly's mother and um, he knew that she was very, very rich. And so he decided to um, allure her in a way, seduce her so that they it, so that he could take the smith's money because he knew how how that he knew that she was the only child and he knew how much his her father loved her and so that's what happened so when they got married when she uh had nelly um they lived a little bit together and then um he asked her to sign some documents which she was not supposed to sign and all of the everything that uh, they had as a family was transferred to Baron. And so Baron left them. He didn't want to. So he basically broke her heart. He abandoned his daughter. Um, I'm not sure that he even, even was a father to her. She doesn't remember him uh, at all. And so from that moment on, um, she lived for a while with some German guy who died as well because he was older, but he wanted to support Nellie and her. And when she, when that happened, she was basically on the street with this daughter. And so they moved back to St. Petersburg and they became, uh, you know, people of the street. Nellie remembers Alps and remembers a little bit of that European life, but most of her life is being, you know, on the streets as a beggar as a basically a homeless uh, girl and um the her grandfather or the father smith he came back later to st petersburg again broke uh he became ill um as well and he there was an unspoken situation that he will never forgive his daughter for what she did how she ruined their family how we discovered that Smith, this uh, old man, is the first one who was humiliated and insulted. And he that's um, he behaved uh, like that through the whole book because he didn't want to forgive his daughter. And by listening to that story, Natasha's father is very moved. So he realized that if he doesn't forgive Natasha, she may end up like Nellie's mother. And he immediately, after hearing that, he hugs Nellie and he says that he will, um, you know, send for her his daughter and that she may come back and that all will be good. Um, Nellie will be adopted. They will be like two sisters. They're ready to take care of them. And while all of that is happening, Nellie says only one thing, but where is my mother? So the fact that she saved um, this uh, family, that her example was serving as, you know, a saving grace to this family, that doesn't mean that she will have her life back. So her mother is gone. And um, there is actually a, a letter that her mother wrote to the Baron, where she says, that uh, Nellie is his daughter and she should be having all of this inheritance because basically that's the money of his of her um, grandfather but Nellie because she's a character that she is and because of the story that she knows she will never go to the Baron and ask for mercy um, and so she has so much pride more than any character in the book and she says i prefer to beg on the street than to go and beg this man who ruined us and to you know ask to live with him so she's actually disgusted by him so much that she doesn't even want to see him from afar 
And that is basically the ending of the book. Um, from that moment, she gets very sick because that was like the last straw um, as predicted. Uh, Vanya is also aware of that. He knows that by telling that story, she um, basically gave all that she has to give and she cannot you know, walk anymore. So she is uh, in bed um, at this new family and everybody is around her. The spring is coming. So everything is kind of becoming better except of her. So we know that ultimately she will go. She's aware of that too. She's at peace um, in these last moments. Um, she likes to see the flowers. She, um, she, en she enjoys being surrounded by so many people that suddenly love her because she never had that. So in that moment, uh, she got, you know, her redemption in a way she got what she deserves, but she cannot enjoy it. And she's aware of that. And so she just wants to thank Vanya. And uh, she gives him that letter um, that her mother gave her for the Baron. And so with the, with, so by the debt so with the debt of Nelly, um the possibility of Vanya and Natasha being together is once again crushed because they have this story between them and so Natasha with her parents decides to move back to the countryside and so uh Vanya is stayed in St. Petersburg he published his book and he became a little bit of a you know um a respected citizen ending really was worth um, all the understanding of the book and all the thinking and all the time spent reading it. Um, and I really like that um, Dostoevsky chose from his childhood, probably one of the orphan girls that he saw somewhere uh, in the streets and that he decided to give her a story like this. Um, also, you're left with this feeling of if Nellie was different, if she was more humble, is staged that way that you actually cannot imagine a different ending for her. But at the same time, you wish, you wish, or you think like, if you were in a situation like that, what would you do? Um, would you for um, forgive for the sake of your own life or maybe to save your family member? Like um, she could have saved her mother, but I don't, I don't think so. So this is, um, uh, a matter of betrayal and fraud. Basically, he stole from them. So I don't think that Baron would be willing to suddenly give a, away that money. So he's somebody who steps on other people for his own um, success and for, for his own benefit. And there you have it. I thought I was not going to be able to talk about this without crying, <laughs> but I managed to finish until the end. And like I said, I would love to see this. There's so many books I would like to see made into movies. I would like to see this one made into a movie that is a little bit, that is newer and more contemporary um, or just a newer production. Because like I said, the one that's on YouTube, it's a little bit dark. I don't think that the quality is good enough. I hope this inspired you. If you're thinking about reading, happy reading. If you're learning English, happy learning. And I will talk to you soon in the next one. Enjoy. Bye. Bye.